If you wanna save money and come to Hawaii in this beautiful place, what you really wanna do is get the XLE trim of this Grand Highlander because you're gonna be saving the most money. This is the entry level and this has got the hybrid motor and this is gonna get you somewhere around 36 miles per gallon combined and that is gonna be just cheaper in the long run. And you still get a lot of niceties in here too compared to the higher level trims like the Limited and the Hybrid Max, which I've also got a couple other videos on. And say hello, Kirk, who is filming me right now, Kirk Kreefels, thanks so much for filming me here in this stunning, stunning island. So let's talk about the ways that you can save money with this vehicle. So first off, we've got 17 inch, actually, first off, we've got 18 inch wheels instead of the 20 inch wheels, and we've got primacy tires. So these are gonna be less sticky tires. These tires are gonna give you better MPG because they are more efficient. They have less rolling resistance. And most importantly, we've got the hybrid motor under the hood here and an eCVT transmission. And what's sort of nice about this is that because we have an electric motor in the back, we get all wheel drive. So what we've got under the hood here is the 2.5 liter engine which is of course hybrid. We have a small hybrid battery in here too. There's not a plug-in hybrid. I think that's gonna be coming in a couple of years, but we don't get that yet. And even though this is a pretty big heavy vehicle, I talked about the, good, the real world MPG that we're seeing in this vehicle is somewhere in the mid 30s. Somebody even got 40 on this. And if you live in a snowy climate, we've got a rear motor in the back, so there's actually no physical connection. And what I like about these vehicles in general is that you've got so much space. Just because you're in the XLE trim doesn't mean that you're actually giving up that much in terms of practicality. In fact, you're not giving up much at all. We do have some simulated leather here. It's called Softex, but we got some harder plastics over here and over here. And on the dashboard, you are kind of giving up the luxury features, but what you don't give up is this nice 12.3 inch display that is really, really good. This comes standard across all of the different trims. You don't give up what I think are pretty comfortable seats for long road trips. Sure, you're getting soft text on here instead of like the nicer leather material, but I don't think there's that much of a difference in terms of the feel. These don't have cooled seats. They're not ventilated, but you do get heated seats and that's pretty good. And of course, what you also get here is a pretty big second row that's pretty easy to get into. And what we've got here, because this is more of the, the base level trim, we have the actual bench seat, which you don't get in the higher level trims. This will seat a full eight people. And we still don't, we still get things like this, this nice little sunshade here. So you can still save money and keep your loved ones cool in the back seat so they don't get really upset and angry at you on that long road trip and get really upset. So in terms of getting in the back here, this is gonna be a little bit difficult, different than the other one, but I think if I just pull this over here, I know it's one, they have numbers here, one, two, one, two, buckle my shoe, get in the back seat. And in the back, this is not the penalty box that some other rear seats are like you get in the regular Highlander, which has a very small back seat. It's basically just good for little kids. So pretty easy to get in the back. Of course, you can fold this down too. When all these seats are folded down, in terms of the cargo capacity that you get, it's almost 98 cubic feet. It's 97.5. That is a heck of a lot. And behind the rear seat, even when the rear seat is up, we still have a decent amount of cargo capacity in here. We've got about 20 feet and you should be able to fit six, seven suitcases in here. This is still a fair bit of space. This is about as much space as you get in the RAV4, which is a two row. You still get all the space back here and you get the power lift gate and you get the 60-40 fully split rear seats. They are a little bit, it's, you know, there's no power back here. You gotta give them, you gotta manhandle them a little bit. You gotta show them who's boss. Kind of like that, <laughs> a little pre-production, but look at how much space you get in this thing. And those seats are gonna fold flat over there. So this is great for moving stuff. This is great if you got a bunch of kids, you got a big family, you need to be doing things and you don't wanna worry about messing it up by having a fancy grade and wasting your money where the dogs are gonna scratch it up. You got some, you got some plastics over here that you're just not gonna worry about. So I think that's sort of the value proposition behind this, but Let's go for a quick drive and I'll tell you how this thing actually feels on the road. We are in the XLE trim now. This is the hybrid version. And so we've got 243 horsepower. I don't know how much torque we have, how much fury of the torque we get over here, but we're about to find out as we go up this medium grade hill. Let's hit it. CVT action. 
right? Not terrible. It's not terrible. It's not fast, but you're not buying it because it's fast. You're not buying because it's not bad. You're buying it because you're going to get really good MPG in this. And yep. so far, what Kirk and I have seen, mm -hmm. we're getting about 36 MPG just kind of driving around the big island here of Hawaii, which I think is not too bad. And we looked on the display and we were seeing anywhere from mid 30s to about 40. And I think that's not too bad because here's what I think yeah. is the reason you're going to get this XLE trim compared to one of the others. You want to save some money. Yep. That's the bottom line. And you want to get the hybrid because you don't want to spend a ton of money on gasoline. The difference in cost between the gas engine and the XLE and this is fairly negligible, I think. I can't remember what the exact is. I think it's like 15, 1600 bucks between the two as well. Something like that. It's not yeah. that it's not that big. So with this engine, you're just going to save so much money over the long run. And I think that's really why you'd get this. So in terms of the trim in here, it's definitely a little more scaled back, I think is the way to, to put it. We got some it's basic, we got some hard plastics up top, Material, which we yeah. didn't have yeah, hard in the higher trams. Yeah. So that's, to me, that's a little bit of a hard mm. pill to swallow, but it's not, it's not terrible, but you still have the quiet ride that you get in the other versions because these all have active sound damping and they all have this acoustic glass. Listen to how quiet it is. You can't even hear the goats outside that are bleeding about how much yeah. they, they love being in this island because it's so beautiful <laughs> it's, here. It's so pretty. It's such a stunning island. So I hope that you guys are enjoying the drive. And we still get all the space that we get in the other vehicles. We still have a ton of USB ports. We still have a pretty nice ride in here. It does break up a little bit over some rough surfaces, but in terms of doing a long road trip, this is the one to get if you're on a budget, if you want to save some money, and perhaps you got a bunch of animals in here, they're going to sort of tear up the interior. The hard plastics are actually not a bad way to go if you are transporting your litter of dogs or whatever if you're a goat if you're here in Hawaii your yeah. goats so that's sort of that's sort of where this this is everything else it drives really nicely it doesn't quite have the pickup of the gas engine let's do it again no. so going up a hill with two people it's fine but if you're going to be transporting five or six people regularly and you like a little bit of power in the freeway, this is gonna be a little bit frustrating. I'm not gonna to lie to you guys. Yeah. I think it's a little bit on the you low know, side. It, feel, it feels not that dissimilar to my 2012 Prius in terms of pickup. You know, it's maybe a tick quicker, especially like zero to uh, zero to 60, but once you're up to speed, it feels about the same and it sounds the same too. It has that, <laughs> that sort of grainy, gravelly yeah. 2.5 liter, four-cylinder yeah. CVT thing that they've been doing for a long time but that's sort it's of bolt, part and parcel. It's bulletproof it's efficient and you know in a vehicle like this most people aren't buying it for performance they, they want practicality and this delivers it in spades. Absolutely and I think the ride quality is equal to the Platinum which we just, just drove. Yeah I think. if not better because of the smaller wheels it yeah. feels very similar. Yeah, this does have 18 inch wheels compared to the 20s, so you get a little bit higher uh, tread wall or uh, tire height. The ride's about the same, but it's equally as quiet. And I think this is perfectly fine. This is perfectly acceptable. I'm not gonna get excited over this trim, but at this price point, you're getting a lot of vehicle for the money. So this is around $45,000 right. because this is the all wheel drive version. And what you get with the all-wheel drive version if you're in a wintry climate is you get a rear electric motor and so that is what's providing your all-wheel drive so there's actually no coupling between the front and the rear and that's how they get all the economy out of this is because they're basically saving on the drivetrain parasitic losses that you're going to get with the 2.4 which only gets about 22 23 miles per gallon combined yeah this is a whole lot higher this is it's not double, but it's it's like 1.6 times better, and that's going to save you a ton of money. The seats yeah. are equally as comfortable in terms of the support, so this thing drives pretty much like you'd expect. I think it's perfectly fine. Not the trim that I would pick. Mm -hmm. Probably the Limited is the way I would go, and I think we've been talking yeah. about that. Limited, limited hybrid. Parking sensors alone are probably worth the investment for that mid-grade. Yeah, parking sensors are a big deal, especially when you're dealing with a large, in-charge vehicle that can be difficult to park. This is 
not something I would personally own in my driveway. You've probably seen my driveway in a bunch of videos, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. very, no, very No, but tight. it's right at my alley with a you know household full of kids. So I think you know me and my wife would be happy to, to own one of these, especially in the hybrid. She absolutely hates, more than I do, putting gas in cars. And the hybrid is going, we'd be making like dozens of less trips to the gas station throughout the year and that makes us both, ha both happy. It has nice technology in here that you can access when you want, but it's never intrusive. You can just hop in and you can drive this and this drives like a normal vehicle. There's nothing to think about. There's nothing to yeah. worry about here. It has a, I think an eight inch display in front of me, which is very eco focused. I can see the eco meter doing this yeah. when I do this. It, 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 looks, it tells me I'm being naughty. Yeah. <laughs> but then when I let off. I, you know, going downhill there, it felt fairly quick. Hope you've been enjoying this first drive of the Highlander Pro. I'm going to have news about the new Acura TX at the end of the week from Austin. If you're enjoying these videos, please subscribe. Another one's right over here. Thanks for watching.